down the outside of the golf cart. That's McKenzie. Two wheels out on the grass. What an overtake. If he can make this stick, he might go right around and lead this little bunch. Hey guys, welcome to the round two video. Uh, before I start, I just want to say thank you to that amazing girl you saw right at the start. Um, if I didn't have the support from my girlfriend, I wouldn't even be doing any racing. So I just wanted to start this video out by giving a big thank you to her. So thank you, Jen. Thanks for being awesome. Okay, now I had a bit of trouble in round two with my cameras fogging up. So I really only got good footage from one race. So in future rounds, I plan on uploading each race and talking you through it and fast forwarding. So we're just looking at the interesting bits, but as I've only got one race where I've got good footage, I thought I'd just let it play while um, I go through everything that happened during the round. So anyway, let's get started. So I come into this round with two main objectives, um, being my very first round because round one was rained out. Um, my two main objectives was to pass my observed license test, that was the main objective, and the second one, just as important, was to bring my car home in one piece. Um, I definitely couldn't afford to have an accident and have major repairs to do, as I'm still running old tyres that have already done a full season of racing. Um, most people change their tyres twice a season. Um, so obviously running tyres that have already done a full season, um, well, a season of racing and a season of being practised, usually guys will run their tyres in races and then use them for practice tyres and just use their fresh sets for races. Um, so obviously that's a pretty big disadvantage having tyres that are that old. So I wanted to take it easy on my first couple of laps, make sure my tyres are warmed up correctly um, before I pushed it and even then um, there was a fair few spins during the first few races and I really didn't want to sit behind people and end up running into anyone so so my main objective for this race which was the last race of the weekend uh, was to make sure I got through it unscathed and also make sure I beat the guy behind me in the white car who's been racing for a few years um, he had about the same pace as me and I hadn't beat him all weekend so I really while I was driving I just wanted to make sure I kept the gap to him behind me and made sure I wasn't following the guys in front too closely. The orange car had spun three or four times during the weekend and I really didn't want him to spin and get caught up in it uh, so I made sure I had a bit of a gap to him in case something bad happened I could avoid being caught up in it. Um, so the observed license test, uh, you have to do a lap within 130% of pole position. So it's pretty easy to do, but you've got to make sure you're doing that and you don't spin and you follow all flags and basically be a good boy. Uh, if you fail that observed license test, you're not racing for the rest of the weekend. So it's a bit of pressure and there was a bit more pressure because one of the other rookies on the first practice session of the weekend, he put his car into a wall and completely destroyed his car. So that was him for the weekend and he's going to have to do his license test again and it's really set him back. So I did not want that to be me. So after the observed license test was done on qualifying, so after that, the first few races were pretty good. It was very wet for the weekend. So obviously being on those cold tire, uh, old tyres, I really wanted to make sure that I got them up to temperature and didn't, I'd never raced in the wet before, so I didn't really know what to expect. So I was very cautious. Uh, this race was probably one of the driest ones for the weekend. It's all dried up. 
So my approach for the races for the weekend was to just be safe and get my times down so that I was in a competitive times for the midfield at the very least by the end of the weekend. Um, I was very cautious during my practice and um, observed license tests just to make sure I got it. Um, I think I was about 10 seconds off the pace. Um, so quite a bit. Um, by this race, I believe I got down to the 133s and the front running guys were in the 129. So I managed to get up with the midfield and next round hopefully we'll be about competing as much as possible. So the first race was pretty uneventful. Um, just made sure I drove safely. One of the other guys had spun, so I gained position there. Um, in the second race, uh, there was a couple of people that spun, which caused a safety car. And I was actually a few positions up, but I drove far too slow for the safety car and people that were quite a way back from behind me managed to catch up during the safety car period. Um, I had a good little battle at the end with the orange car. I could have um, defended and stayed in front of him going into the last chicane, but I didn't realise it was the last lap and I didn't really want to go too, too wide in that. So I let him pass me and cursed as I saw the chequered flag and he got a position in front of me but I was still ahead of the white car, which was pretty good. I had a bit of trouble during the weekend with my car, as you might have noticed. Um, you'll see me tapping on my dash. Uh, my RPM uh, display was uh, wigging out and showing, not displaying the RPM properly. It was it's a pretty old, it was like 20 years old, so it would just display it wouldn't display the numbers properly so i'd have to hit it and it would sometimes come back sometimes it wouldn't so during the whole weekend i was also changing gears conservatively because i didn't know where what rpm i was at half the time so and i obviously didn't want to damage my engine so i was shifting a bit early and just being conservative with that uh, also had a problem later on with my oil gauge my oil temperature gauge which from me hitting the dash all the time to try and make the rpm display correctly it ended up um, not displaying properly so um, that was also another issue i was dealing with at the end of this race as i came into the pits i noticed my car was making a funny noise and I was getting really worried because I didn't have the uh, correct RPM most of the weekend so I was really worried I damaged something on my engine but it turned out uh, one of my pipes on my exhaust there's like four pipes that connect to a, a exhaust collector and goes into that one main bit out the back uh, one of them a crack in it had um, uh, one of the welds had broken so it was just making the exhaust pipe um, jiggle and make a noise when I revved so thankfully it wasn't a major issue and um, something for me to, that I went and got fixed after the race weekend in the prep for the next round I'll um, have a video on the few things that I've fixed on my car uh, that'll be the next video before the round three video. I also competed in the Aussie Car Festival of Speed last week and the week before, which had three V8 supercar drivers, Chaz Mostert, Jake Gazeki, and Nick Perkat competing in it. So I possibly might make a video of that race. If not, I'll just do a link to the broadcast so you can watch it there. I uh, also did the F4, uh, hadn't purchased the F4 so I only just got it the week, well a few days before the event um, and competed in the F4 as well. Didn't do quite as well in the F4 but in the 
Formula V around winter and I think I got fifth place, maybe sixth place, which is pretty good behind those uh, V8 supercar drivers. Okay, so to talk about this race a little bit as something interesting is about to happen, um, old mate in orange did a spin, um, all those years of iRacing paid off and what I thought was going to happen ended up happening. So. Um, I managed to avoid him. He actually got off the brakes a little bit and started rolling back and I really it was a code brown moment because I didn't know if he was going to keep letting it roll but luckily he put the brakes back on and I managed to get around him. Um, after I got around him, the mate in the white was very close to me so I knew, we were, I think it was the second last lap this one. So. I knew I had to try and push to keep in front of him. Um, I was a lot quicker going through this uh, section here and, and I needed that gap because the last corner before the chicane, um, he was getting a lot of time on me, probably about a second. So I knew I had to try and push through this bit um, so that he wasn't going to be able to draft and pass me on the straight. So. As we went down the straight, I was checking my mirrors. I could see he was right up on close to me. So I decided to fend, defend going into turn one. And if he was good enough to get around the outside, he could have it. Um, luckily, as you can see, he will uh, go a little bit too fast through that corner and get an off track. And I was able to chill out after that and cruise for the rest of the lap. Um, so I had some major dramas after the race. So after the race and everything was packed up and I was on my way home. As I was going home, I was probably about 40 minutes from home. The track's a couple of hours from home. So it was a big journey. Uh, it was quite late at night. And as I was going, I I heard a weird sound in my trailer, so I slowed down a bit. I was looking in my mirrors and noticed that my trailer was tilting to one side, so I pulled over to the side of the road, and it had turned out that I'd run over some bailing twine, which there must have been kilometers of it, so it all got twisted up in my axle, jammed up in my axle, and shifted my axle on my trailer, which then made my tire rub, and then blew my tire out so that was an absolute nightmare it took a few hours to get a um, tow truck there where it was on the side of the freeway of the highway um, there wasn't enough room for them to get it on the tow truck so they had to get someone to come out and shut the highway down while they put my trailer with my V on top of it onto my onto the tow truck and then tow it home so it was a very expensive exercise and I didn't get home until like midnight and I'd use some of my tools to get my tire off and check out what had actually happened and it was raining so I'd got all water through all my toolbox so I had to dry all my like wipe down all my tools to get all my tools dry so they didn't rust so I didn't end up getting to sleep until like 1.30, 2 o'clock and then had to back up for work the next day. So it was an absolute nightmare. Um, ended up getting it fixed. Um, it's all good now. Uh, still got to do a weld on it uh, just to make sure it never happens again. But apart from that, it's all fixed and ready for the next round. Anyway guys, I might end the video here. Next video will be race prep for the next round, which is coming up in a few weeks. I might make a video of my race in the Festival for Speed, but just in case I don't, I will put a link to the broadcast of the race down below. I was featured lots in that, so it's a pretty good watch. And we'll see you on the next one. Like and subscribe. Later.